Are you searching for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Welcome to Heart Talk on Shalom World, where we visit with our shepherds of the church and discover the incredible mission that we have as Christians to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all the earth. Well, today we visit the UK and the Roman Catholic Church in Scotland, where Bishop John Keenan serves as the shepherd of the faithful in the Diocese of Paisley. Well, following his priestly ordination in 1994, Bishop John served as a parish priest in Kings Park, Glasgow, and he was a chaplain to a secondary school in that area. Well, he also has spent time lecturing philosophy at Scotus College, Beerston, and was appointed to serve as chaplain to those college students and staff at the University of Glasgow. Later, he was appointed as a vocations director for the Archdiocese of Glasgow, but God had another purpose for him as he was appointed to be the bishop of the Diocese of Paisley. He was ordained on the feast day of St. Joseph, March 19th, 2014. Today, Bishop John serves as the vice president of the Catholic Bishops Conference in Scotland, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to one of these beautiful shepherds of the Turk. Bishop John, welcome to Heart Talk. Oh, thank you, Dina. I'm looking forward to uh, our chat. Well, I am interested to hear a little bit about your formation. I know that you grow up with four other siblings, five of you in the house, your father working hard as a working class family, but your mom staying home and raising the children. How was your family life and your faith life, in, faith life introduced into your home? Well, uh, I grew up as you say, uh, Dina, in a in a working class family in a in a social housing estate but my my parents are really respectable and they raised uh, our family to be respectable uh, many um scottish catholics were um second generation immigrants mostly from ireland although some from um italy and poland and lithuania and so although we were from uh, a working class background that was pretty much as far as the irish immigrant population had gotten to in in Scotland um, when they first came unfortunately there was quite a bit of discrimination but um, the Catholics were um, aspirant and so though most of us in the 1970s were from working class families we all had ingrained in as a real um, sense of respectability um, a sense that um, that we would go on and, and make our way in, in society. And so my memories of those days were um, of happy days, of, of good days, of being part of, very much part of a wider Catholic community between the parish and the school, where we're all expecting that things would get better um, for us in terms of materially, but also better for the church. It was a time of great hope uh, in the 70s. Things began to change really in the 80s and onwards. Give us a sense, Bishop Keenan, of that initial spark of the priesthood. When did you really start to think about the priesthood? Was that something as a young man or as you continued on in your education? Well, as a as a, a boy, uh, Dina, I was, along with my four brothers, I was an altar boy. It used to just be altar boys then and... Um, as soon as we'd made our first Holy Communion, then uh, within a week we were able to become altar servers and uh, you just essentially went, uh, went on to the, the sanctuary and learned the trade as, as, as you went. My family was the family where the priests, if they needed altar service for a funeral or for a wedding, they would phone um, our family. So I remember during the summer, every day, morning mass, at 10 o'clock, myself and my three brothers would serve mass. And I remember after a while thinking, you know, I, you know, if, if Father um, Bill couldn't make it for mass today, I could celebrate mass. I know all the words and I know all the actions. And I remember scratching my head and thinking, I don't understand how it takes them seven years to learn to, to celebrate mass. So all of the boys, I think, had 
a kind of a romanticised idea of the priesthood then. The priests were our heroes. They were big figures in the Catholic community. And I had a sense probably then um, that, that I might be uh, a, a priest. Uh, maybe it was the early um, calling. The Lord often calls uh, us to our vacations by planting a seed early on. Bishop John, you've had the opportunity to lecture at the University of Glasgow, to be a chaplain to many students, and to be really in environments where young people are asking those questions about what is truth, what is purpose, what is the meaning of life. In your time as a priest and now as a bishop, what are the greatest needs of our young people, those young people asking those very important questions? truth that we have to get through to our young people is that is that God is real, objectively so, that if they were to look calmly and seriously at the um, evidence from reason and from science, that um, all of those arguments weigh very heavily in the way of the demonstration of the existence of God. Now, that is countercultural because the the culture in the West, at least in these days, tends to um, say to young people, if you're going to be really rational about it, you'd be an atheist or an agnostic. But if if you can't really follow reason and science, then and you prefer narratives, then you'll be someone who believes in God. Well, in fact, my experience from teaching philosophy is that that. Um, philosophy and science much more point in the direction of the objective reality of God and that if God doesn't exist then we can't found any objective truth or any objective goodness in the world. Now for um, if truth is going to be lasting and meaningful it's going to have to be objective truth and then put um, developing that point, the things that really matter to us, love, justice, all of those realities which make our life genuinely human. I think if our young people were to have a sense of that, then it, it would be a good foundation for them then to go on and find out more about, about their faith and about, about our Lord Jesus Christ and salvation. Can you reflect a little bit about how you've seen Our Lady being present in your vocation as a priest and as a bishop, how she has been involved in your life? Well, Our Lady has, reflecting back, I mean, Our Lady has always been a part of my life. She was always there, even though I didn't uh, always notice it. Uh, and, and so I, I think back to when I was a, a little boy that, my mum and dad gathering the whole family to pray the family rosary. And then when I was of an age, um, joining in the Junior Legion of Mary of well, one of the local parishes and, and, and having that formation for mission uh, in terms of our, our Blessed Mother and, and the Holy Spirit. Later on, I, when I was in my, my parish, I, I could play the organ a little bit, not very well, but a little bit. And my parish priest asked me if I would um, play the hymns for the Monday evening novena to Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, which I did for a number of, of years. And, and then um, there was a, a, an old worn out statue of Our Lady that was in our, our church and our parish priest asked me if I would, uh, I could, um, you know, paint it and refresh it. And I remember doing that and it seemed as though every stroke seemed to just be the right stroke in the right place. And, and so all of those ways were, were, were forming me. I think Our Lady was always with me. I, I feel as though Our Lady um, had chosen me uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a special way and was guiding me even though I didn't realise it. When I went to seminary, it was only then that that relationship with Our Blessed Mother became quite conscious for me. In my first year, the transition from moving from Scotland to Rome was was a big one for me. Well, it wasn't always easy. Thereafter, my um, sense of, of Our Lady guiding my vocation and my priesthood has been really, really constant and really quite, quite special. 
Bishop John, it looks like Pope Francis gave us an early Christmas present with the announcement of a year dedicated to St. Joseph. And we've talked a little bit about our Blessed Mother and her influence in your priesthood in the church, of course. But we're we're learning new things about St. Joseph. Uh, we're just now undergoing a consecration to St. Joseph in preparation of his feast day in March. Give us a sense of, of your thoughts of St. Joseph and why do we need St. Joseph in the church in our families right now. I ag- agree, Tina, with uh, your point that St. Joseph is coming to the fore in the life of the church in these times in a, in a way that I don't think is just coincidental or has a, a natural explanation. I, I think this is a, a supernatural providence. I think um, that heaven is sending St. Joseph to the church in these times, I know that whereas all through my life I um, have feel, felt the presence of, a, of Our Lady with me, uh, I've only more recently begun to feel the, the a, a relationship with St. Joseph in devotion and prayer, and that's increasing all the time. Last year, uh, I made the 30 day, 33 day consecration to um, St. Joseph and uh, and then I was really delighted to hear uh, of the uh, Pope Francis announcement on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception last year of this year of St. Joseph. And, and I, I think, and I, and I am surprised again, because it was announced as a surprise, but how quickly, how avidly, um, sincerely, zealously the people have taken to this. The, so many are now undertaking this 33 Day consecration. So many of our priests are are praying the, the 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 official prayer for the year of Saint Joseph at the end of of masses. Many are um, engaging in novenas that will start on Wednesday, leading up to the feast. Um, I think you know Saint Joseph was the understanding of 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 Catholic men about what it means to be a man, what it means to be a father. Well. And um, St. Joseph just presents the, the perfect example of that and the companionship and the, the grace when we, when we pray to him. So I think as protector of the universal church and as a model of, of a, a gentle modelhood of manhood and an inspiring model of, of faithful fatherhood, then uh, I, I think his example is, is, is more wanted just now than ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bishop John, as you are currently serving as the vice president of the Catholic Bishops Conference there in Scotland, give us a sense of the work that you and the other bishops do. Your main focus of serving the needs of the people, the spiritual needs of the people, what's really on the top of your priority list right now? A constant um, theme really is um, safeguarding our young people and our vulnerable adults, but um, as well as putting all of those processes and procedures of accountability in place, we're, we're also being encouraged to develop a, a theology of the church's um, care for the little ones. And so I, I think just now having put in place many of the structures and procedures, we're now looking to say, well, what is the Lord saying? What's the Spirit saying to the church in, in in the way that we um, safeguard our, our young people. And the safeguard is a word that's, that's, that was with the church, you know, the, the, the prayer of St. Michael, um, safeguard us against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. So I think we're now beginning to see what does it mean to safeguard our, our young and our little ones? And, and that obviously is in the, in the obvious of meaning of, of the the, you know, the, the troubles of these times of the church, but it's wider than that, isn't it? How do we safeguard their faith and their souls and their 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 um, their, their serene journey with the Lord to, to heaven? So that's a that's an important thing. But just now the, the Scottish bishops are undergoing quite a radical review of our bishops' conference to ask ourselves, uh, what are we about? What's the what is the purpose of the bishops' conference and what are we trying to achieve and and we're, we're, we're gathering around the idea of mission and evangelization that the church exists to evangelize uh, 
um, Pope St. John Paul said we sense, didn't he? We sense um, the Spirit saying to us that we should uh, direct all of the resources and the energy of the church to a new evangelization. New in methods, we've spoken about those, haven't we? Um, these online methods, when, when Pope St. John Paul said new in methods, he could have had no idea that what was coming down the line in terms of information technology, but not just new in methods, new in expressions. You know, how do we propose to uh, contemporary people of the third millennium uh, the gospel in their own idiom and language without in any way compromising the essence of the of the gospel? How do we find the correct expressions of, that resonate with them? But above all, a new in, new in ardour, a new zeal, a new passion for our Lord Jesus Christ in ourselves as a church and a passion to bring our Lord Jesus Christ to others, to our country as as their Lord and their, and their Saviour. So those are the kinds of things, as well as all of the other housekeeping, as you can imagine, the finances and the fabric and, and, and so on and so forth and the other matters, liturgical and social and, and, and the like. Those would be the, the overarching areas, mission and evangelization would be the overarching area that we're thinking about in these. What are your thoughts on how to teach people how to pray, how to talk to God? I can just maybe say what what I do, Dean, and I, I find for myself as a, as a priest, it's possible for me to make time in the morning just to be quiet with the Lord to... So what I do in the morning, uh, among other things, is to take the gospel of the day uh, and read through the gospel of the day. And just uh, in that gospel, I, I meet Jesus. I don't just know something about him. In that gospel passage, I encounter uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel passage I use will be the gospel for the day that's used in our, our masses. And and that's the same gospel that Pope Francis is going to be meditating in Rome and that the, the monks are going to be meditating on in their, their monasteries and the sisters and their cloisters and the missionaries and all of the mission fields. And that is the, the scripture that our Lord gave us as our daily bread to the church that day. And, and in that scripture, I meet the Lord and, and manage to pray a rosary, you know, as as Pope St. John Paul said, that the rosary is is a contempl- a meeting of, of Jesus because it takes us through the gospel and it takes us through the life of the Lord, but we're seeing him through the eyes of our Blessed Mother Mary, the one who loved him and knew him best. So she teaches us how to know him and love him best. If we can pray the rosary uh, in a day, that's a, a lovely thing. And obviously, if at all possible, we can either get to Mass in church or, or online. It's now possible online. Bishop John, I know for us here in the United States, I hear many parents and grandparents praying for their, I think the number one prayer intention is for their children or grandchildren to come back into the faith. And probably that's a worldwide prayer, I think, for so many. From your bishop's heart, your invitation to those who might just be joining for this moment to come home, to come home into the heart of Jesus Christ. So that is my appeal that, um, you know, you may have wandered for this reason or that reason or the other reason. You may have been hurt or you may not have understood the church or you may have been uh, attracted by the world or, or the world may just have taken up so much of your time that bit by bit you had deadlines to meet and and you weren't able to get to church this Sunday or that Sunday or the next Sunday and so now most of um, your knowledge and awareness of the church is coming through secular media and you'll be you're, you're more confused about the church than ever before but you know in your heart of hearts you know something's missing you know in your heart of hearts that you've not left the church for something better in fact, um, what you experience in the church cannot be replaced. You know that even when you drag yourself out of bed and got yourself along to the church and were only half paying attention and, 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 and left at the end, you knew that 
somehow week after week as you did that, somehow your life was holding together. But when you stop going to church on Sunday one week and then the next week and then the next month, somehow your life is 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 falling apart. And that's because when you come to church, you're not just coming to a social gathering. When you when you come to the church, you're following the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He rose on Easter Sunday, and in St John's Gospel, he came and appeared to the Christian community on a Sunday, on the eighth day, to remind us that every Sunday in our churches, in our Eucharists across the world, every Sunday, the risen Lord Jesus Christ comes again really physically and is with us again as his community. And he gives us his consolation, his direction, his communion, his grace, his blessing, his his hope. And we're able to go out into the world refreshed by the experience of his presence, the same way as the disciples on the road to Emmaus, walking in the wrong direction, walking away from Jerusalem, perplexed, confused, upset, found Jesus walking in their midst and listening to their hearts and they were able to pour it out. And all of a sudden, they discover that it was him and they're restored and run back to Jerusalem full of new life. That's every time we come to Mass on Sunday, as we come Sunday after Sunday, we're meeting the Lord, we're um, pouring out our hearts to him, we're finding in him some consolation, some strength, some meaning. So come home, come home. Uh, this pandemic has provided a sort of a golden interval if you're uh, were embarrassed about coming back to church because you think everyone is there and everyone knows that you're just coming back. Well, none of us has been there in the last year, or very few of us have been there in the last year. So when you come back, everybody's coming back, and um, we're coming back to please God. New life, new joy, new hope. We've been talking with Bishop John Keenan of the Diocese of Paisley in Scotland, and what a beautiful way to continue this season is to remind us that Jesus is calling us home. I want to encourage all of our viewers to continue to pray for our priests, pray for our bishops. They need our prayers, and I know, just as Bishop John is, they are all praying for us. For Shalom World and Heart Talk, we're grateful, Bishop John, to have you with us today. We'll continue to pray for the people of Scotland and for all those in the UK to continue to come home, to come into the heart of Jesus through Mary. May you have a blessed Easter season, Bishop John. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you, Dina, and God bless all your people. I pray God's blessing on and Shalom TV and the work that you do in, in proclaiming the good news of plentiful redemption through the, the, the media. And pray God's blessing also on the audiences, those who, who listen to and, and, and watch your programs. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.